Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's start reviewing the general methodology for solving RC circuits. Here we have a typical first order RC circuit with a few voltage sources, a capacitor, a few resistors, and a time equal zero. The switch goes from the left to the right. And then the way to solve it is to follow the following rules. First, what we want to find is we want to find the voltage across the capacitor at t equals zero. That's before any changes were allowed to happen. That's why the time that the switch will switch over at that very moment was the voltage across the capacitor. Next, we want to know what the voltage will be when time has gone by. Uh, a lot of time has gone by, not quite infinity, of course, because that takes forever, but a very long time has gone by after the switch switched from this position to this position. So let's just kind of notice that this is what it will look like. And then we want to know when the current stops flowing, what will be the voltage across the capacitor. And we want to calculate what we call the time constant. Tau it stands for the time constant, which is R times C. Once you have those values, then you want to use the equation where the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the voltage across the capacitor at time equals infinity when a large amount of time has gone by, plus the transient phase where we take the voltage across the capacitor at time equals zero minus the voltage across the capacitor at time equals infinity or very large times the e to the minus t over rc. So let's use that technique on this particular function right here, or this particular circuit. So let's see, we want to find out the voltage across capacitor right here when time is equal to zero, just before the switch moves over to the different position. Well, let's see here, we have a 20 volts over here. Let's assume that this is zero volts at this point. This point here is 20 volts. And then you can see that the current will flow around these or through these resistors. That means that the voltage across the capacitor here will be equal to the voltage across this resistor. And so we need to know what percentage or what portion of the voltage will drop across this resistor versus this resistor right there. Since those then will be in series, once the current no longer flows through the capacitor, we can then say that the voltage across the three kilo ohm resistor is going to be equal to 20 volts times the ratio of the three kilo ohm resistor divided by the total resistance going from there to there, which is two kilo ohms plus three kilo ohms. And so that would be three divided by five or 12 volts. That means if we have 12 volts across this resistor, we'll have a 12 volt drop across the capacitor. So for step number one, we can say that V across the capacitor at time equals zero, which is the same as the voltage across the three kilo ohm resistor is going to be equal to 12 volts. Now the switch moves from this position to that position. Now we can see that there's no longer any current flowing through the capacitor on account of this, but now we have current flowing through the capacitor, I guess in this direction right here on account of this voltage supply. But of course that will happen for a while until the capacitor fills full of charge and then there no longer will be any current flowing through this particular path right here, meaning there's no current going through the resistor, meaning there's no voltage drop across the resistor, which means that the voltage across the capacitor must equal to the voltage across the source. That means that the voltage across the capacitor at time equals infinity, of course, when it approaches infinity or when a large time has gone by, that will then be equal to 50 volts. The last thing we need to do is find the time constant. We know that the time constant is equal to resistance times the capacitance. And of course, that will be after the switch moves over from here. That will be the transient period where current flows through the capacitor and through this resistor until it's fully charged. We can then say that the time constant will be this resistor times this capacitor. So it'll be five kilo ohms multiplied times 0.4 millifarads. Okay, that's 5,000 times 0 0.0004. So that would be equal to 5,000 ohms multiplied times 0 0.0004 farads. And that would be equal to, let's see here, these three zeros cancel this, that would be equal to two seconds. So the time constant is equal to two seconds in this case. Looks about right. So now that I have this information, now we can go ahead and use the equation for point two. Now we can say that 
the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the voltage across the capacitor at infinity, which we have right here, would be 50 volts, plus the voltage across the capacitor at zero time, t equals zero, that would be equal to 12 volts, minus the voltage across the capacitor, again at infinity, would be 50 volts, multiplied times e to the minus t over tau would be 2 seconds. And so the equation then becomes 50 minus 38, and of course I probably want to put volts on there, so 50 volts, volts minus 38 volts times e to the minus t over 2 seconds. And that would be the function for the voltage across the capacitor. Let's do one more thing here. Let's say what would be the voltage across the capacitor after one second. So the voltage across the capacitor when T is equal to one second is equal to, well here we have 50 volts minus 38 volts multiplied times E to the minus, now T will become one second divided by two seconds, so it would be E to the minus one half. And let's see what that's equal to. So we have 0.5 negative e to the x and times 38. And that would be equal to 50 volts minus 23 volts. And that would be equal to 27 volts. So as an example, the voltage across capacitor on this particular circuit, when time is equal to one second, would be equal to 27 volts as an example of how to use that equation. And that's how it's done.